Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 39, dated September 13th, 2020. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is entitled, The Maryland Constitution of 1867. That constitution is the current and fourth constitution of the U.S. state of Maryland. It came into being as a result of the great dissatisfaction with its immediate predecessor, the Constitution of 1864. That document, which we've already covered, as we saw, was very controversial, and most knew that it would not last long, and they were right. Less than three years later, there were calls for another constitutional convention in Maryland, and as a result of it, the Constitution of 1867 was born. It was submitted to the voters in September of that year and approved by more than a bare majority. It thus took effect on the 5th of October, 1867, and has governed the state of Maryland ever since that time. To date, the Constitution of 1867 has been amended almost 200 times, reflecting the various wants and needs of an evolving society, all right? So I'll point out some significant things in the Constitution of 1867 that I feel you should know if you don't already. Starting with our Declaration of Rights, the preamble reads, We the people of the state of Maryland, grateful to Almighty God for our civil and religious liberty, and taking into serious in taking into our serious consideration the best means of establishing a good constitution in this state for the sure foundation and more permanent security thereof, declare, Article 1, that all government of right originates from the people, is founded in compact only and instituted solely for the good of the whole, and they have at all times the inalienable right to alter, reform, or abolish their form of government in such manner as they may deem expedient. So Article 1 is simply saying that we the people at all times have the power to alter, change, or abolish the governmental structure in this state as we see fit. There are democratic means to do this, okay? We the voters, those who participate in society, have the power to do this. When government becomes destructive of the rights of the people and becomes destructive to the good of the whole, the people not only have the ability, but in my opinion, the duty to alter, change, or abolish it as necessary and to institute a new government that is beneficial to the good of society. Okay, So never forget, folks, Article 1 of our Declaration of Rights keeps power in the hands of the people of this state to alter or to abolish its government as they may deem expedient. Okay? Never forget that. All right? So we'll skip ahead to Article 28. Okay? Article 28 reads that a well regulated militia is the proper and natural defense of a free government. Sounds like the Second Amendment in the U.S. Constitution. That's because that's what it's modeled after. But you notice, it doesn't say anything about bearing arms. Correct, it doesn't. Well, in Maryland, we don't have the right to keep and bear arms based on a state constitutional right. The right to keep and bear arms in Maryland is, of course, protected by statute. But there is no state constitutional right, per se, to keep and bear arms here. Okay, Maryland is one of a few states that does not have a state constitutional right to keep and bear arms, a state equivalent of the federal Second Amendment. Okay, it's unfortunate that we don't, but nevertheless, like I said, we have statutory protections to keeping and bearing arms, and of course, the federal Second Amendment is entirely applicable everywhere in the United States now. Uh, due to the cases of D.C. versus Heller and McDonald versus City of Chicago. Uh, the right to keep and bear arms is quite secure here in, here in Maryland, in spite of the absence of a clearly designed state constitutional right to do so. All right. So with that, I'll skip ahead to Article 
47, the last of the lot. This, all right, is focused on crime victims. Article 47 is the last of the rights mentioned in the state's Declaration of Rights, and it reads that a victim of crime shall be treated by agents of the state with dignity, respect, and sensitivity during all phases of the criminal justice process. Okay? So Maryland has a victim's rights amendment, per se, in its Declaration of Rights. Well, not a victim's rights amendment, but a victim's right in the Declaration. Things that the victims of crime are entitled to, okay? Which is quite progressive, okay? You don't normally find that everywhere, but we have it in our Declaration of Rights, and most states simply have it uh, as a general part of their constitution or by statute, okay? But in the Declaration of Rights, that's not that common, all right? So those are three interesting things to point out uh, in the Constitution of 1867. Uh, additionally, this Constitution requires, as I mentioned in a previous history bite, that we the people be asked every 20 years whether or not to hold a state constitutional convention required by Article 14, Section 2 of this document. All right. The last time we were asked was in 2010, and the answer was in the negative. The next time we will be asked will be in 2030, when it will once more likely be in the negative. And the reason being is because it is a very easy thing to amend the Maryland State Constitution, as we discussed in a previous History Bite, and thus there is no need to effectively put everything on the table by organizing a state constitutional convention, all right? Nothing is safe in a constitutional convention, okay? Anything can be uprooted, but no matter what is put out there as a proposal, it will still have to be approved by a majority of the state's voters. But like I said, since it's so easy to amend the state constitution, there's no need to for all of that. You could just change what needs to be fixed and keep it moving, all right? The last time we had a constitutional convention was in 1967 and 68. And the proposed constitution they came up with was rejected by the people of the state. Tis no matter, though. A great many of the suggestions from that convention were later adopted as individual amendments. Other significant changes uh, in this constitution uh, are taking away judicial elections from some courts, adding new courts altogether, and reestablishing the process of gubernatorial appointment for many judicial offices in this state, something that the constitutions of 1851, uh, 1864, and originally 1867 uh, did away with. Okay, so in 1867, we see retention elections instituted for judges of the Court of Appeals and the Court of Special Appeals, okay? And the governor selects those judges uh, for those two courts. The District Court of Maryland is created under this constitution. Of course, they are directly appointed by the governor, okay? And do not have to stand for election in any way. Court of Appeals and Court of Special Appeals judges go through ret uncontested retention elections, of course. You've seen it on the ballot, okay? You just vote yes or no on whether or not they retain and they stay in office. If you don't, if they don't get a majority of yes votes, then they have to go. The governor has to appoint somebody else, okay? But you can't challenge them for their office, which is very good. Like I said, me personally, I don't believe in contested judicial elections, okay? But the retention election process for higher level judges, Court of Appeals and Court of Special Appeals, allows them to have some sort of accountability to the public. But, and while maintaining uh, the much more sophisticated process of gubernatorial appointment to that office. So you're not just getting any old Tom, Dick, or Harry off the street on our state's highest court levels. The circuit court, of course, uh, as in this constitution, they may be directly challenged, okay, from outside individuals, judges of the circuit court. So they don't have that security. So these are some significant things uh, in the constitution of 1867, as well as a great deal of additional powers given to local governments to govern their respective locales as is needed for their people.
All right. So we see a document that has evolved over the past 153 years now. Okay. It's a long time. And this constitution has lasted longer than all three of its predecessors. The constitution of 1776, the constitution of 1851, and the constitution of 1864 all put together. So obviously, the crafters of our current constitution did a great job. I thank you so much for listening to this History Bite and for thus now listening to the conclusion of our Maryland State Constitution series. Okay, Continue to tune in to my History Bites. Never stop learning. Share this information with others. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you at the next one. Peace.